Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for uh, joining me. This is the DAX Open. My name is Russell Shaw, Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address is rshaw at fxm.com, and today is Monday. It's the 29th of November, 2021. Just going to bring up our high-risk investment warning. I'm going to keep this on screen for a few moments. Um, I'm going to also put in the chat the link for Friday's live non-farm uh, payroll. So I don't believe we're sending out an email this month uh, just because it's uh, our resources um, are smaller going into December. So there's a, a few people I think in the marketing team that are on leave. So um, if you usually register via the email we send out, I'm of the opinion we're not sending that this time. So please go into the chat and um, you can uh, register that, or you can email me, and I'll, I'll send you the um, the link. Um, but there will be a, a, a live uh, NFP trade um, this uh, Friday. Hey, Zanetta, KD, uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining this morning. Uh, much appreciated. Just going to bring up the uh, market commentaries disclaimer, and I'll uh, keep this on screen for a few moments. And um, here is our reference, FXM Markerscope 2.0. Um, I also want to uh, just uh, let you know I'll be uh, reading the CNBC morning note. Um, it's probably worthwhile me actually adding that to the reference and bringing it up on screen. Um, I'll do that tomorrow. Not sure I haven't done that already, but um, let me just uh, bring up the DAX chart. Uh, We'll start off with this one. This is the monthly. But before we get into the, the chart, let's just go through the uh, CNBC morning note. Um, and its first paragraph is very interesting. It says, European stocks are expected to start the new trading work far higher despite extensive concerns over the newly discovered Omicron COVID variant. Uh, European markets are set to soar at the open. Uh, pressing cons uh, despite pressing concerns about the Omicron variant, that the uh, World Health Organization labeled a variant of concern. While scientists continue to research the variant, Omicron's large number of mutations has raised alarm. Preliminary evidence suggests the strain has an increased risk of reinfection, according to the WHO. The variant has been found in the UK, Israel, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Australia, and Hong Kong, but not yet in the US. Many countries, including the US, move to restrict travel from Southern Africa. Vaccine makers have announced measures to investigate Omicron with testing already underway. While it remains to be seen how Omicron responds to current vaccines or whether new formulations are required, required, Moderna's chief medical officer, Paul Burton, said Sunday the vaccine maker could roll out a reformulated vaccine against the Omicron variant early next year. U.S. stock futures moved higher in overnight trading, and uh, that was following Friday's big sell-off. Uh, as the market looks ahead to key economic data set to be released this week, including the November jobs report on Friday, which is expected to show solid uh, job gains. Economists surveyed by the Dow Jones, by Dow Jones, expect 581k jobs to have been added during November. Elsewhere in the Asia Pacific, um, shares fell in Monday's trade as markets struggled to regain confidence after the WHO announced last Friday. Uh, after the WHO announcement last Friday, when the Nikkei 225 in Japan and Hang Seng in Hong Kong both fell more than 2%. Oil prices were higher during Asia trading hours after dropping as much as 13% on Friday, its worst day this year. International benchmark uh, Brent crude were up 3.3% and uh, US crude up 4.1%. Um, and that's in the futures market. Key data releases in Europe include Eurozone business climate, economic sentiment data, for November, flash inflation for Spain and Germany. All right, so that's the end of the note. Um, hi, Howard. Uh, morning to you. And uh, yes, um, it was it was 
which was good. Hope you had a good weekend too. Hey, Peter. Uh, <laughs> Peter says, hope everyone caught the drop on Friday. Um, all right. All right. Let's, no, instead of going through to the monthly, let's start off with the weekly and we'll come back to the monthly. Uh, let's go over here. All right, so here's the drop. And this is um, this is very uh, this is a very um, obvious emotional drop in the market. I have written an article on our insights, um, and I put it on Telegram if you guys want to take a look at it. This type of a range candle is awkward, just to say the least. Taking kind of um, our bearish bullish biases out, when we see a candle like that. Right off the bat, it's going to make the um, it's going to make your analysis much harder. Um, and the reason for that is as follows. Uh, let me bring up a Microsoft Paint. And um, just bear with me, um, just why I just as I make the point. Um, Ideally, we like to see these type of things, sort of order, orderly moving markets. Whether whether they're bullish or bearish, you know, uh, we just want to see order, which of course is uh, um, quite strange considering that markets are extremely chaotic, right? Um, nevertheless, this is kind of what we want to see. And by and large, you know, we are able to work with these things now. Um, this over here is what we call a swing low. Let me change the color. This is called a swing low. It's called a swing high. It's called a swing low. This is now possibly a swing high. I haven't really completed it. But the reason we can spot the swing lows, uh, the swing highs, the swing lows, because they're very ordered. And of course, it's in hindsight, right? Um, What's going to happen here? Well, this is where we are every single day. We want to know if the market's going to continue higher. We want to know if there's a reversal pattern, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what happened on Friday, let's keep it red, is this. Okay. So we've got this on the weekly. Now, do we have a swing high? Do we have a swing low? What do we have here? And it's very difficult to tell because, um, well, first of all, I guess we could say, yes, we've got a swing high here, but it's the range that is going to prove to be problematic. And the reason is, let's just say, let's just say, okay, and I don't know whether this is true or not, but let's just say that the market overreacted. And the market does overreact frequently. It's called, it's called an, um, an overshoot. So let's just say there's an overshoot. All right. How do we kind of measure the overshoot here? Um, is this now a is this now a swing low? You see that? Is this a swing low? The order's gone. You see over here, um, we could quite clearly see that we had a higher. High, sorry, a higher high and a higher low. Higher high, higher low. Well, this is inside of this range. This is inside of this range. Uh, it, it may be that we've visited the an overreaction, but we're confused now because all of this is really taking place within the range of the sell down. And uh, are we bearish or are we bullish? Are we bearish or are we bullish? So uh, what happens if we go down here? Ah, okay. Yes, conf confirmation that we are bearish. Okay. What happens if we go like this? Okay. Ah, there we've taken it out. Confirmation that we are uh, that we are bullish. So because we're having um, this long-range candle, it's just going to be harder to identify the actual trend direction. Um, well, that's my opinion. We may have days that go like this. Uh, let's just get rid of all of this. 
You maybe have days where there's just uh, the WHO comes out with an announcement and that just drives markets further down. Fine. Okay. Or we may come out, there may be an announcement and there's a reaction to that, which I don't think will happen. But these two kind of ranges then negate each other out and then we're back onto level playing field. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the chance of that happening is remote. This range here has now introduced a complexity that we're going to have to try and deal with. Hopefully the market kind of the market action sorts it out sooner rather than later. But when we go back to this, well, we, all right. So the, the we all heard what the uh, report on CNBC said, CNBC said, said markets are expected to uh, jump higher, right? It's expected to be higher. So we go down to the Audi, well, you know, the only reason that they can possibly, the only reason that they can possibly say that is because of this gap open between Friday's close and Monday's open. Well, what happens if prices are driven down? Well, then, see, so even the reporting here is kind of, it's almost blind. You know, they're having a, uh, they're going to have a very difficult a job getting a, uh, we all are going to get a very different, we're going to be hard pressed to get a, a, a market a directional uh, bias here. Um, and that's uh, based on the, um, this weekly chart here. So take a look here. We've got like this little squarish candle over here. Uh, I don't know what it's doing. It may be a bullish candle. It may just be the rally in a downtrend and we may see further prices. It is very difficult to tell. So I thought, well, how are we going to deal with this? You know, how are we going to deal with this? We can't just say, well, it's too hard. Uh, let's not even try it. No, we've got to make the effort and then we've got to decide whether we want to be um, involved in this type of market or not. So I think um, the way out of this is to go to the monthly, which we don't generally look at that. In this case, I think it's going to offer some insight. And um, let me just see if I can get this to a, a point that, um, yeah, okay, there we go. All right, so if we kind of take a look at it on a monthly chart, so I think um, it does offer perhaps um, an aspect of positivity. It's not outright bullish, but it's not outright bearish either. Yes, last week was a very tough week, no, no doubt about it. But if we kind of zoom out of it and, and look at the market from a bird's eye view, uh, we've still got a fairly ordered market here. So um, this this was chaos. Okay, so this is this is the initial pandemic. Okay. It's it's cast, but it's an overshoot, and you, you couldn't tell this was an overshoot until months later. There was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of savvy investors that kind of bought um, here. I think I, took, I think I told you guys a story. I was listening to a um, an interview on Bloomberg. I can't remember which fund manager it was, and right during the sell down, the, the fund manager was going, "This is it's the best buying opportunity." He's seen for years and I was thinking Jesus God I don't know where he's getting that from to me it looks like a hard drive panic and you're spot on you know but it, the idea was uh, he has the overshoot on the monthly and then we get so here's uh, let's put in our peaks and troughs peaks troughs uh, so now here's the confusion, the lower peak, okay, here's the higher trough, okay, and then we get a, uh, as soon as we take this out, uh, we go back into a bull market high trough followed by higher peak. As soon as that peak's taken out, we've got a higher trough, higher peak, and that's where we are right now. Um, here is the next higher peak, uh, where's the, so Mark is just opening, uh, here's the next higher peak, 
Okay. Well, now this is what is interesting. Is this the next higher trust? And I, I, this is where um, I think it's not um, it's not all bearish. It's not all bearish out there in terms of a, a longer term um, analysis. But we kind of zoom in here. Uh, so is this the high trough? I don't know. We've got rules. We've got rules to measure whether there's a higher trough. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put in an arrow so you can see what I'm looking at. So now we're looking for our three conditions on a monthly. So we've got um, condition one. Here's the lowest low. We've got condition two, price taking out the reference candles high. Okay, so we've got two of the three conditions. And we don't have the third condition, which is everything. And we probably have had it until last week. Last week's sell down uh, technically um, took out the prospect of this higher trough. But, but what we do have right now, let me just try and do this, is we've got a higher high there and a higher low there. Now I'm using lows and highs as opposed to peaks and troughs because they, they're different. The peaks and troughs are used um, for the, um, when we do sort of longer term sort of identification of trends, reference peak, reference trough, lower peak, higher trough, higher peak. But when we're looking at uh, the short term, let's look at, this candle's high and this candle's low, and then you can see well when we've got this as a reference high and this as a reference low, then this candle's got a higher high and this candle's got a higher low. Well, that's that's a swing, okay? Even if you get uh, ten red candles in a row, which are, which is determined between the uh, interaction between open and close. So even if you get ten red candles in a row but they all got higher highs and higher lows. It's still a swing up, you understand? So uh, does that make sense? So uh, the swing is still uh, is still moving here in the right direction, albeit with a lot of pain from last week. So I think that the, um, the monthly chart at the moment looks okay. Where it becomes dangerously um, sort of um, negative is when we get something like this. So we've only got two days left of trade this month. Now, if next month is a bearish month and we have this big down move, well, now we've got something different. Now we've got a reference high, condition one, and condition two, three down. Ah, well, then we may be in for a swing down. But we don't have that yet. In fact, we've got a higher, high, higher, low. So uh, all things uh, sort of being equal, um, we um, still have a, a, a bullish bias despite last week's pain. One other thing just to say is that this is um, is what we call a spinning top. So it is a, it is an air of confusion around, and I think we understand that. So because what is this om, uh, om, uh, Omicron virus actually going to do? Are we going to go into another shutdown? Is it going to impact supply chains? Is it going to crush economic activity? And that's why we're seeing this um, uncertainty here. The market is starting to sort of pricing the nervousness there. But again, the swing is up. Let me just see, I've got uh, Peter writing needs to break. Okay, so Peter's looking for the 59 level. Okay, so somewhere here, somewhere here is where Peter's looking for. And I think that would do a, a lot of um, sort of, um, that would uh, certainly be giving us a signal, wouldn't it, Peter? I would expect if we're around the 59, we'd also get a nice, um, a nice um, sort of stochastic reading and on the longer term charts. So that's what Peter's looking for. Um, let me just see where Tao is writing. Uh, okay. Um, 
how it's just writing. If he wants to look at the DAX on TradingView, how do you do it? Um, specifically FXCMs. Um, let me just bring up TradingView. Okay, I just want to go into um, a few other charts, but let me, let's just quickly look at TradingView here. Uh, just bear me, guys. Uh, so you should be able to find the DAX. Um, in terms of the uh, uh, FXM instrument for um, the FTSE, I, uh, I'm not sure it's there, to be honest with you. Um, uh, so we just, if you want, just type in uh, GER30 and then choose the FXM instrument here. See and then, um, so that's how you'd find it there. Uh, the UK 100, I haven't been able to find. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, I beg your pardon, it is there. Okay, so you'll just click in. So I, I hope that helps out. If, if you can't find it, just shoot me an email, but um, it should be there. Um, all right, let's just go through to our zone analysis. So the zone analysis here, I'm not sure it's gonna help us. Uh, because of the um, just because of the um, really uh, difficult uh, weekly chart. Nevertheless, we are in zone three here, and if we are in zone three, our our methodology suggests that we should be looking at resistance areas and seeing if those resistance areas bring sellers in. Now, of course, that's a distinct possibility. Okay, uh, let's just go back to this weekly. Now, of course, that's a distinct possibility. We've got the um, stochastic that's rolled over negative, and we've got the RSI that's below 50. If the stochastic carries on heading towards 20, and if the RSI stay, stays below 50, yes, you know, then I think that part of our methodology uh, clearly is what we should be looking for. What I am worried about is that this is an overshoot. I think that um, we, um, we as market participants, so not we as, I'm talking about global market participants here, uh, have potentially overreacted here, potentially, and that's why we've got this um, gap here. But I don't know, because this has um, got directional uh, problems when we try and make inferences. So what I would suggest is to be very cautious here, okay, and to recognize the difficulty of this environment, okay? Understand that risk is heightened, and if risk is heightened, it's something that we need to consider seriously because risk damages accounts, okay? So be very, very uh, cognizant of that. Uh, if there is a movement towards R1, clearly we want to see if R1 uh, causes a reaction. And if there's a reaction, uh, there needs to be the two triggers. And then, of course, we watch to see if we move towards 20. With a stop loss, and with money management, there's no discussion about this yet. The, if you are looking to participate, you're participating in a high risk environment now because of last week. So uh, that's something that um, uh, you is one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is to perhaps um, um, uh, think that maybe there's an overshoot here. Um, I know that. Um, Omicron is spreading um, locally. However, the reports that I've heard is that the symptoms are actually quite mild. I want to just, again, openly admit my limited uh, scope of knowledge around this. Okay, so please um, understand that. But as far as my investigations have taken me, uh, it seems to be fairly uh, mild. However, it's spreading fast. So I'm not sure what that means. Okay, so. Um, there might be some sort of overreaction here. Now, uh, we'll just have to see if we get the angle and separation here, if we get the stochastic to, ha to hang out in the 80 area. And then that 15-9 area that Peter's looking at, I think is a decent level to keep an eye on. And then the idea here is 
um, to watch these monthly oscillators very, very carefully. Yes, they've crossed over to the very side. We want them um, to either go through to the extreme because we can trade short, or we want them to go to, sorry, so we want them to go to the extreme low if we're looking too short, or we want them to return to the extreme high if we want to go um, long. So you can see already the market is still confused. So when you and I started this conversation, this was a, a blue square. Well, now it's a doji, okay, which is uncertainty. So the market started off uncertain, and, and, and that's the environment we're in. Please recognize that. Okay. Um, Katie, what is the people's perception in South Africa on the new variant? Okay, so I think people are concerned, Katie. Uh, Shadrach, if you want to sort of jump in here, please do. Um, but my, uh, my, um, the, um, the um, reaction is for um, for caution. I think we all nervous because it looks to be an aggressive, aggressive variant in terms of um, catchiness. But again, um, KD, uh, the symptoms so far have been mild. And then last evening, um, our president um, has now uh, become quite strict with um, vaccinations. And uh, in some areas, um, they are being made compulsory. So I guess there's a, if that says anything, perhaps the government is nervous as well. So um, Jadrak saying no much reaction from his side. All right. Um, any other questions there? Any other questions? All right. If you guys need to uh, um, get hold of me, please email me, um, marshall at fxm.com. We won't have the US Open today. Uh, we won't have the US Open tomorrow. Uh, I've just got two crazy days in front of me. Hopefully, uh, Wednesday, we can do it. Thank you very much for joining me uh, this morning, guys. As always, much appreciated.